We're talking uh, herbal remedies this morning. Mm -hmm. Kristen Aguirre live this morning at Four Winds Farm in Quincy. Yeah, what are you learning, Kristen? I am learning about a ton of medicinal herbs. This morning has been a real class for me so far. With me now is Deborah Les, who is an herbal educator. Deborah, why is you know using herbs so important today? I think it's important that we learn to take personal responsibility for our health. And we can do that in a way that's very safe. I like to use the word health enhancing herbs rather than medicinal. There's so many things that we can do to prevent getting sick or when we first start to get a cold or flu or something else where we don't need to go to the doctor. It's a blessing to have such good health care when we need it, but we don't always need to do that. And Deborah, you are no stranger to herbs. No, no, I've worked with them all my life, which has been a while now. Mm -hmm. And you teach classes here at your farm. I do. I teach nine week medicinal herb classes. We're right in the middle of one now and I usually do one in the evening and one in the morning. So you can go to either one of those and you don't take both of them. And I've done uh, 12 to nine week classes for many years. And tell me a little bit about your certified garden that you have. Uh, yes, I have a, a certified garden that's certified by the Illinois Herb Association, which is part of the Farm Bureau. And so it's an official educational garden. So I have 20 herbs out there that are herb of the year herbs, that were the official herb of the year herbs. And then I also have a lot of other ones. So people go out, we collect things, we bring them in, and we make different products from them. All right. Well, coming up later in the show, we are actually going to get our hands on some of these medicinal herbs and see how they can benefit you. And one of the things we're going to be doing is making some homemade tea. Mm, I know you yeah. like that. Yes, I would. I love tea. <laughs> Drink it every morning. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Kristen. <laughs> Herbal Remedies, that is. Kristen Aguirre is live this morning at Four Winds Farm. Yep, I am learning all about medicinal herbs. And what's the first thing you do when you get a cold? Drink some hot tea. With me now is Deborah Lee, a health herb educator. What do we have going on right here? Well, I'm making some peppermint tea, and I started that earlier. I picked the peppermint uh, last night, and so I've had it simmering away a little bit. And when I started, I just peeled off some of the leaves, and there's no need to really have the stem in there. And you can tell now that it's starting to turn a little weaker in color. See, this is the bright green and it's starting to lose its color. And then we'll put in a little stevia now, sweetener. Now, I was so excited about this because, you know, we see stevia in stores and you never, I mean, in the commercials, you see what it really looks like, but you, it, it's actually in pure form here. And I tasted it and it tastes just like sugar. It's, I'm, I'm so excited about this. I want to take some home with me. It's so good. And um, so you basically just what a we... a little bit of it too. Yeah. So in, in this pot, we're going to put in a few leaves here. It's always good when you're drying. We're going to talk about drying in a little while. But you don't want to have things all crumbled up because they lose their flavor. So we're putting a little bit of that in and we'll stir it up. I'm using a non-metal container because that's so much better. If you use a reactive metal like aluminum or stainless steel, it cuts your flavor, especially on something like mint. And so now we're gonna take some and we'll strain it out here. I'm also using a bamboo strainer, so not using metal, but you can use a metal if that's all you have. And I would pour it, but hey, it's live TV and I don't wanna screw up too badly here. <laughs> <laughs> I could make a mess. And just oh. strain it through and it's going to be a nice tea. So you could do this for so many of your herbs that are either fresh or dried. All right. Well, it is tea time here. And coming up later in the show, we're going to show you some other ways medicinal herbs can help you out. Tea for two and two for tea. <laughs> tea for you and tea for me. Is that, a, I don't know. That's it sounds good. Nice. Herbal remedies this morning. That's right. And she's showing you how you can make them at home. Yeah. How's it going? It's going good. Earlier we showed you how to make some fresh tea right at, right from your garden straight to your pot. Now we're learning how to dry them out. Deborah, why is it so important to kind of dry those herbs out? Well, you're not always going to be able to go out and pick things fresh, especially now that we're coming into fall and winter. So if you dry them, then they'll have a longer shelf life. In a little bit, we'll, we'll learn something that has an even longer, longer shelf life. I like to use a dehydrator and I like to get one that has a, a thermostat on it so that you know about what the temperature is and about 100 to um, 105, 95 degrees. This is some lavender that I've been drying in here. I also have over here burdock leaves and the burdock leaves are something that I'll use in salve when I make that. Mm -hmm. And this is the stevia that we talked about when we had the tea. So this is a whole gallon of stevia. And you notice that I don't have it crumbled up because when you crumble that, when you're drying something, 
then it's going to lose its flavor and its potency a lot faster. So you found these herbs in your garden or somewhere from the wild. This, this, this mm -hmm. is stinging nettle, which mm -hmm. is wild. And sometimes I'll crumble this up and put this in tea also. Mm -hmm. And if people don't have this, mm -hmm. what can they do? Well, there's a lot of things that people have done over the years. If, when people had wood-burning stoves, which I had for quite a while, then you could just hang them up, the herbs, over the wood-burning stove and let some of that heat come. Uh, or if you have a hot uh, attic or something. The main thing is it's not as much the heat, but you want to be sure that you have it dehydrated. So if you have a dehydrator in a small room, that can work pretty well too. And you want to have trays where the air can flow through. So if you do something like screen wire, try to not have the wire itself, but try to have it be like a plastic. Mm -hmm. And so is there a difference between using fresh herbs and dried herbs for medicinal purposes? Usually if you use dried, you need to have a little bit less of it because of the concentration, but you're not going to be able to go out and f get fresh herbs all the time, and so you dry them so it'll have a bigger sh shelf life. Just like we do when we have culinary herbs and we have that in jars, it's very easy to use. Great. Well, coming up later in the show, we are going to actually make some of these home remedies, so make sure you stay tuned for that. Great. Thanks, Kristen. Well, Kristen Aguirre is live at Four Winds Farms this morning. Of course, inside, because yeah. it's not necessarily gardening weather, we're talking about herbs. Yes, we are. We were talking medicinal herbs, and earlier we talked about tea and how to make salves. Now, Deborah, what are we talking about? Well, this is a tincture, because often if you have a headache or you start to have a cold, you don't want to go outside, especially in the middle of the winter, and try to find something fresh. And so a tincture is sort of like a tea, and so we take fresh leaves and fresh flowers, and in this case, here's some echinacea over here. It has a pretty picture of the echinacea plant on it, the flower. And so we take these, this was actually the flower that was in here in some of the leaves, and we tore it up and we pour vodka over the top of it. And the That's vodka, right, vodka. Yeah. You could also use a vinegar base or you could use uh, glycerin, but usually vodka is the best because when you're doing folk medicine, it preserves, it draws out. So you can see here that the color is not pink anymore and it has pulled out the active ingredients. And this will last for a very, very long time. So you'd strain it off and you'd put it in little dropper bottles. And we even know this is a good suggestion for Tegan, who seems to maybe be coming down some suggestion. Uh, the echinacea has been shown to boost the immune system. And so for me, if I start to get a cold or flu or something similar to that, then I'll take two or three droppers full of this and we just put it in some liquid. So you just fill up the dropper and just put it right in some water here. And so it's like having an herb tea. And the smell is super strong. So we just need a quick gargle of that, right? Or well, gargle, just it. go ahead and drink that. So that will help boost the immune system. Yeah. I rely on this all the time. All right, and really quickly, guys, you always hear about everyone doing those master cleanse, whether it's in powder form. This is an all-natural form we have here, right? Mm -hmm. And it's something that will kill. Uh, it has a lot of garlic in it and has a lot of horseradish and other things. So if you take that regularly, usually a couple of times a day, a tablespoon a couple of times a day, then it just keeps your body in better health and mm -hmm. has many, many properties. And that's in a vinegar base, an apple cider undistilled vinegar base. All right, so if you're feeling cold, make sure well, this is not a doctor recommendation, though. So don't take it for word, but you can try some of these herbal remedies. Love that it says master formula on the label. <laughs> yes, and it's made with like garlic, and she says two spoonfuls, and she says it smells really bad, but to eat some <laughs> parsley afterwards, and it should take away the smell. Huh. huh, and that's homemade. You can't buy that. No, it's homemade, and Mark and I got the recipe, so we're going to try it. Ooh. Ooh, cool. Great. <laughs> it's not a spoonful of sugar, but something else, I guess, entirely. 